One morning, Boris and Barbara Bear were having fun watching Snuffy running and playing outside their house. Snuffy is having a wonderful time, said Barbara. She is such a lively little dog. Then Snuffy wagged her little tail and ran off, barking happily through the woods. On her way to Poppy Pig's house, she passed Melanie, who was riding her scooter to school. Oh dear, said Melanie. Snuffy can run so much faster than I can go on my scooter. She is such a speedy little dog. Snuffy ran round and round Melanie's scooter. Then she gave a happy little bark and ran off towards Poppy Pig's house. Good morning, Snuffy, said Poppy. You certainly are a happy little dog today. Goodness me, said Poppy. I wish I had as much energy as you, Snuffy. Snuffy certainly did love to run and jump, and soon she was running and barking on her way to visit Miffy. But Miffy was not at home. Snuffy ran all around Miffy's house, but she could not find her. Soon Snuffy began to get tired and sleepy. She lay down in Miffy's garden and fell fast asleep. In a little while, Miffy came home from school and saw Snuffy lying there. Snuffy didn't move at all. Miffy was very worried. Snuffy? Snuffy? she called, but Snuffy still did not move. Just then, Poppy Pig came walking by, and Miffy said, Oh, Poppy, look at Snuffy just lying there. I think she must be ill. How come? said Poppy. Just this morning, she was running and jumping in my garden, so very full of life. But look how very still she is. I think she must be sick. Melanie came riding up on her scooter. Look, Melanie said Miffy. Snuffy must have something wrong with her. She's just lying there and not moving. Well, she was moving very fast when I saw her this morning. Just at that moment, Boris and Barbara Bear came by, carrying a bag of groceries. Hello, Miffy, said Barbara. Why do you look so sad? I'm worried about Snuffy, said Miffy. She's lying so still. I'm afraid she's ill. But just then, Snuffy opened her eyes and sniffed. Look, said Boris. Snuffy smells the food in our shopping bag. She was just very tired, Miffy. But as soon as she smells good food, she wakes up again. Here is a biscuit for you, Snuffy, said Barbara. After her sleep and the biscuit, Snuffy was ready to run around again. Miffy was happy to see that Snuffy was just fine. Poppy Pig was working hard in her garden. There was a lot of work to be done. The whole garden was covered with fallen leaves. Poppy's niece, Grunty, was sitting nearby reading a book. Can you come and help me, please, Grunty? asked Poppy Pig. Oh, Poppy, said Grunty, I'm so tired. How can you be tired? asked Poppy. You haven't done anything all day except read that book. So please, Come and help me. You can rake all the leaves into a heap. 
So Grunty began to rake the leaves. But it was hard work, and she huffed and puffed and soon had to sit down again. You must finish the job, Grunty, said Poppy. We must clear all the leaves up today. There are too many leaves and it's such hard work, said Grunty. Just then, Miffy came walking by. May I help you? said Miffy. I see that you have a lot of work to do. Oh yes, said Grunty. We would be very happy if you could help us. Oh yes, please, said Poppy. Grunty says she's too tired to do any work. Perhaps she'll find that doing the work together is more fun. I like to rake leaves, said Miffy. They make such a nice crunchy sound. Grunty and Miffy raked the leaves together. The pile became bigger and bigger. What's great fun, said Miffy, is to jump on the pile of leaves and sink right down inside. I will show you. Oh dear, said Grunty. Now we have to rake the leaves all up again. But it's fun, said Miffy. I'll rake them back into a pile and this time you can jump into them. Well, all right, said Grunty. Is it really fun? Try it, said Miffy. Grunty laughed and laughed. You are right, Miffy, Grunty said. It is great fun. And soon Miffy and Grunty were taking turns, raking, running and jumping in the leaves. Then the telephone rang. Poppy went to answer it. When she returned, she said, That was Miffy's mother. She asked if Miffy could come home and rake the grass. Oh, said Grunty. May I go and help her, Poppy? And Poppy Pig said, But Grunty, I thought you were too tired. Yes, I was, but I'm not anymore said Grunty. So she promised to go and help Mother Bunny because raking leaves really is a lot of fun. On her first day at school, Miffy's teacher said, Children, today we'll plant seeds in flower pots on the window ledge and during the year we will watch them grow into lovely flowers. Miffy was very surprised when the teacher handed her a little black seed. How can a little black seed become a pretty flower? It's the magic of nature, said her teacher. Everything living starts from a tiny seed. In the seed is everything that can help it to become a flower. When we put it in the ground, we must water it so that it grows. Every day Miffy watched her pot. First, a very tiny bit of green showed above the black soil. Then small leaves began to form. Then, in just a few weeks, a tiny bud of colour appeared. And in another couple of days, it opened up into a real flower. Miffy wondered if everything she planted in the ground would grow into something nice. That evening, while Miffy was helping her mother with the dishes, she told her how wonderful it was to see a flower grow from a tiny black seed. Yes, said Mother Bunny. Tomorrow, your father will plant some seeds and you will see flowers grow again 
right here in our own garden. Miffy was so excited that she dropped a cup and it broke into pieces. Oh dear, said Miffy. I'm so sorry, Mother. I broke one of our lovely cups. She began to cry, but Mother Bunny said, Don't cry, Miffy dear. I know it was just an accident. The next day, Miffy thought, If a lovely flower can grow from a little seed, perhaps if I plant a piece of the cup in the ground, a new one will grow. When Miffy's father was planting seeds in their garden, Miffy asked, If I plant a piece of the broken cup, will a new one grow? I don't think so, Miffy, said Father Bunny. But you can try it. So Miffy watched the little garden every day, just for fun, hoping that maybe a new cup would really grow. Gradually, many beautiful flowers appeared, but no cups. Miffy's father and mother knew that Miffy would be disappointed, so Father Bunny had an idea. When he came home that evening, he had bought a new cup. While Miffy was sleeping, he buried the new cup where Miffy had put the broken piece. In the morning, Father Bunny said, Miffy, I think something is really coming up where you planted the piece of broken cup. Miffy ran outside as fast as she could go. Sure enough, there was a bright yellow cup handle sticking up out of the ground. Miffy pulled it out and was very surprised. I know that only living things can grow from the ground, she said. Mother and father laughed, and Father Bunny said, Yes, Miffy dear, that is true. I bought that new cup and put it into the ground, just as a little joke. And they all laughed. One morning, Father Bunny was reading the paper. Wouldn't it be nice if Snuffy could stay with us sometime? Miffy asked her father. It would be nice, said Father Bunny. But we must first build a little house for her to stay in. Boris Bear has lots of wood, said Miffy. I will go on my scooter and ask him if he can give us enough to make a doghouse. So Miffy took her scooter and set out for the forest where Boris and Barbara Bear lived. When she got there, she told Boris they would like to build a doghouse for Snuffy. Boris said, What a nice idea! Of course I will give you the wood, and I will also cut the wooden parts for you. So all you have to do is nail them together. Oh, you are very kind, Boris, said Miffy. That will make it easy for us. So Boris took some wooden boards and measured them. Then he cut them into just the right size and shape so that they could be put together to make a doghouse. Oh, thank you, Boris, said Miffy. Miffy rode home on her scooter. She told her father what Boris was doing. Boris is very kind and clever, but he can't carry all those wooden parts to our house. Let's go and pick them up in our car. Father Bunny and Boris carefully put all of the parts of the doghouse into the back seat of the car. Father Bunny thanked Boris, and then he and Miffy set off home. When they arrived, Father Bunny laid all of the parts out in the garden. Now let's see, said Father Bunny. 
This piece must be part of the roof. And this could be a wall, said Miffy. One piece after another, they began to put the doghouse together. It looks a little strange, said Father Bunny. There is no doorway for Snuffy to get inside. Yes, said Miffy, and there is a big hole in the roof. I don't think we have it quite right, said Miffy's father. Boris didn't give us an instruction sheet. Just then, Boris arrived. I thought I'd better come and help you, he said. I wasn't sure if you'd know how to put the doghouse together. Boris was a clever bear. He quickly took all the pieces apart and put them together in a different way. And look, there was a cosy doghouse for Snuffy. They all laughed at how easy that was. Along came Snuffy. It's a little house just for you, Snuffy, said Miffy. Snuffy loved her new doghouse and enjoyed her stay at Miffy's. One day, Miffy's mother took a large tray of fresh biscuits out of the oven. Oh, they smell delicious, said Miffy. And there are so many, Mother. Maybe I can take some to Boris and Barbara Bear. They love biscuits too. That's a nice thought, Miffy, said her mother. I will put some in a paper bag and you can take it to Boris and Barbara on your scooter. Miffy put the bag of biscuits into her scooter basket and headed out to the woods where Boris and Barbara lived. Just then she heard the sound of barking. Snuffy was running after her. Good morning, Snuffy, said Miffy. Would you like to come along with me to visit Boris and Barbara Bear? They travelled along together into the woods. But the ground in the woods was very bumpy. This didn't bother Snuffy, who ran around happily. She ran ahead much faster than Miffy. Miffy had to ride very carefully. When she went over a very large bump, she didn't notice that the bag of biscuits had fallen out. When Miffy arrived at Boris and Barbara's house, Snuffy was already there. Miffy wanted to give Barbara her present, but she realised that it had gone. I wanted to bring you some of Mother's freshly baked biscuits, she said to Barbara, but I have lost them somewhere in the forest. Never mind, said Barbara. I baked some biscuits too, so we can still have a nice little feast. And so they did. When it was time for Miffy to go home, she looked around for Snuffy, but she couldn't see her. I can't go home without Snuffy, said Miffy. She might be lost. Don't worry about Snuffy, said Boris. All dogs know their way home. So Miffy started home on her scooter. But she wondered, where could Snuffy be? Snuffy, Snuffy, she called. Where are you? She went on a bit further and called out again. Snuffy, Snuffy, where are you? Now Miffy was beginning to get a bit worried. Snuffy? 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 Snuffy! 
Snuffy. Suddenly, Miffy saw the bag that her mother had filled with biscuits. Oh, she said, at least I've found the biscuits. But when she picked up the bag, it was empty. There were no biscuits inside. Then she heard a little sound from behind a tree and went to see what it was. And there was Snuffy, sound asleep, with just a few biscuit crumbs next to her on the ground. So there you are, Snuffy, said Miffy. I see that you had a nice feast on your way home. Snuff.